Hi everyone, nice to see you again. If there would be any problem with the sound or anything, please uh, let me know, else let's get going. All right, yeah, nice to see you again, Yugoslavia and uh, Berserker and everyone else. So let's continue. So we are doing uh, end game restriction, right? Restriction restriction in the end game and uh, basically we're talking about preventing the opponent's uh, plans no matter if we are better or worse no matter if we are defending or we are having an advantage we are using this kind of thinking trying to prevent the opponents uh, yes the coach is swedish yeah thanks uh, legendary goat for that important piece of information so let's get going i thought maybe we should just have a quick look at what we did last time um the last example if you remember very nice end game by bachel lagrav who was playing with the black pieces i just wanted to make sure that everybody remembers this i think i will only quiz you for the black move at this point it's a long variation but i just need the first move to just see that we are on the right Page to be on the same page. So that's it. Aha. Yeah, everybody remembers this. Nice, nice. That's what this is about. If we are going to play a rook end game two pawns down, safe to say we need to somehow limit their op opportunities, limit their um, rook in particular. So let's ask uh, Fianchetto. Please go ahead, Fianchetto 12. What was uh, your move here? You can just play out the move if you like, Fianchetto. Or I can ask somebody else. Uh, Sarthak, you can ask Sarthak. What do you think, Sarthak? What was the best move here for Black? Exactly. So rook f4, we're targeting this pawn. And after rook takes a5, even if white is two pawns up, they were not able to win this game because Bacher used this uh, Vancouver's uh, famous method. I'm not sure this is the right place for the... Was it the right place? No, I don't think so, right? You have to be very, very careful not to let the king out, right? Or was this working also? I think this was not, uh, not the correct way of playing, if I'm not mistaken. If you do something like this and then you give check again, if I'm not mistaken, I can go all this way and... I thought I was maybe winning here. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, these end games are very tricky. Sorry, I, I probably should go this way, right? So that I have the rook. Uh, I was thinking that I was winning here. No, I think I am winning. Yeah. So that if you continue to give checks, this is exactly where you need to have the check on, on this side, right? You need to keep up the checks because if you run out of checks and then you try to... Uh, yeah, I mean, now I just need like one move to limit, to liberate my... My rook, if you now go back, uh, I can use my rook like like that, I think. And ultimately, uh, it's not the same thing anymore. I hope this makes sense, what I'm, what I'm saying here. I'm not an expert on this, on this endgame, but I think this is how it works, right? If, if you play something like rook, uh, rook g8, uh, king here maybe, and... Wow, I feel like I'm, I'm getting confused. <laughs> Did I put the, the pieces on the wrong places? Um... Anyone who, who is... This is a draw, says Heuristic Mind. Yeah, I probably made a mistake, mistake here. This endgame is very tricky. But I know this is not supposed to be the right way to play with with, uh, with white. With black, sorry. If rook h4. So what should white play then in, in this position? Um, yeah, interesting. Confusing endgame. If white just could move the rook to some normal place, then they would win because black's king is so, so far away. So rook a7, says Heuristic Mind. Yeah, I, I guess that's... That makes sense. Uh, and if I try the same technique with the rook on this side, it's not the same thing anymore, I guess, for some reason. Because this is basically the kind of mechanism that we are uh, aiming at, right, in this endgame. So, yeah, I don't know. This is also not clear. Maybe you could make a draw like that also, possibly. No, it looks a little strange to me. What he played in the game, I think, is much nicer. Uh, he keeps the rook so that it can always give checks. After rook takes a5, he played king h7. So he's keeping the rook on this side so that one, later when the king comes up, we are ready to, to give all these, these checks to the king. So 
basically that's what happened last time. Uh, when we look at this last time, I mean, he kept the, the rook on this side. He's not, of course, this is low priority to go and take the pawn. The king can deal with the pawn. The important thing is to keep white's rook busy defending the pawn. That's the whole point. That's what we're talking about here, tying the opponent's pieces to the defense of their pawns. So you can put the rook on most squares, I think, here on this uh, on this side. But uh, yeah, this is one of the good squares that you can use. And then you should, of course, I should quiz you again just to make sure we're on the same page. You get 10 seconds for this. Exactly, L008, Legendary Goat, Sartak, Wyatt, Almoris, Yugoslavian, Daniel, and so on. Yeah, everybody remembers this. We have to do this now. Don't give him a chance to liberate his rook. We have to keep up, at the, keep defending or keep limiting their opponent's rook. So rook b5 is the right move. That's what he played last time. Yeah, if you played rook a4, it's different because now I can bring in the king. I can bring the king and then I can liberate my rook. So don't do that. That's a typical endgame principle, right? Uh, to put the rook behind the passed pawn. But since we need to also limit their king at some point or, or bother their king, annoy their king, this is not the right angle. Yeah, white would come like this, like we were saying, and, and liberate the rook. So you need to keep the rook like that. Strange endgame, no strange endgame. And the only time that you will ultimately play, put the rook in the back, it's when the rook has already come this way and the pawn is there because then they have this concrete threat of rook check. So basically you're waiting here for, for, for white. You're keeping up this defense. Yeah, this move, I can also quiz you, of course. I feel like we're doing the same thing as last time. So only five seconds here, I think, for this uh, for this move, all right? Only five seconds. Yeah, Gordon, Daniel, Al, Heuristic, Brian. You see, even if I do this for five seconds, I get like 30 right answers. So that's a good sign. It shows that you're learning quickly. Uh, Quoki, what did you play here? Sorry. What was your move? Aha, rook b6. So we keep up the good work here. We keep up the good work with the rook, tying up white's rook to the pawn. Yeah, I think you, you're bored with this topic already. We, we have seen it so many times. But uh, yeah, it can help you to save half a point in your games. Rook a8. Now you see there is the concrete threat of a7 and rook. So the king came back. And if white plays a, a7, just to make sure we're on the same page here, everyone, I'll just quiz you one last quiz here on that. Yeah, Gordon, Al, Al. Yeah, if you play the rook b7, you will have to leave the class at this moment. No, I'm just joking. I, like I told you last time, I once did the same mistake myself. And I was very fortunate that my opponent actually forgot about this. And I was able to save the game later on like that. Yeah, that's one of my most lucky moments ever, I think, in chess. But I had some unlucky moments also, so I think it, it makes up for that. So yeah, please go ahead, Gordon. You were one of only four correct uh, uh, correct answers here. Yeah, and five seconds was very slow. Exactly, rook a6. Now we can finally uh, switch to this angle. So I think there are two ways to understand this. One, since the rook cannot... Yeah, how can I explain this? There is no space for the king. Yeah, exactly. I hope you see what I mean. If we did this here, white would have a space for the king, right? They would do something like this. And ultimately, they could like... Yeah, Put the rook on, on a7, a8, sorry. I hope we are on the same page. Yeah, if I played something like, sorry, like this, I will put my rook here, and at some point I will play this, and then I will play that. And this we also talked about last time, right? We said that in this kind of position, it's it's enough to have four, one, two, three, four uh, files distance. Now, we, we checked that last time. So that's the reason why this is uh, winning for white. But on the other hand, the other one, they don't have a8 says heuristic mind exactly they don't have a8 so that's the logic of rook oh sorry i went a little too far away that's the logic of rook and games so now here it's different now we play this and even if they approach they don't have they, they don't have like a move rook a9 they would like to play rook a9 but that's not a legal move so the game will end in a draw in the game he played something else and it was also a draw so Tricky endgame, tricky endgame. Please try to remember this, everyone. Please try to remember this kind of thinking that once they are close to the... Uh, maybe maybe we shouldn't play that, by the way. Maybe we should just give the check instead. I, I, In my way of seeing things, this is the best file to use. Far away from the king, but we have access to, to this square also. We don't have access to that square. Yeah, exactly. So please remember, take a picture, take a mental picture of this position. Try to understand 
the rook must be on this side and try to remember this this kind of mechanism and i think we're we're done j pawn is that pawn you put next to the clock <laughs> interesting all right i think we should continue we have now studied the uh, vancora's method of venture or however you pronounce it let's uh, continue i wanted to show you something played recently there is in europe there is a funny competition it's called small nations the, the championship of small nations anyone can you tell me a small small nation in europe they have their own little championship no albania is, is bigger yeah vatican city exactly vatican uh, no Mold moldova is a big country no no Vat iceland is a big country also yeah like like luxembourg no sicily is not not their own country san martino san marino sorry yeah countries like that so they have their own championship and that's where I found this next example. Uh, so let's see if you can if you can guess where are the players from. Berend, yeah, that's hard to know. I th actually, I'm not sure myself. I think Berend is from Liechtenstein or from Monaco or something like that. But I'm I'm fairly sure that that uh, Siska, the black player, is from Faroe Islands. Faroe Islands. Are you familiar with Faroe Islands? Okay, we will do a ge geography quiz. Faroe Islands. Uh, it's located between two countries. Which countries? It's it's in the middle of the North Sea, by the way. But uh, no, not France and Spain. You you have to go up up in the map, please. No, Denmark. Yeah, you're very close, uh, Roger. Between Iceland and not Norway. It's it's more to the west, right? More to the west. Iceland and Scotland. Yeah, bravo. No, Sweden is not involved in this. Oscar's right. If I'm not mistaken, if geography doesn't betray me, Faroe Islands is located to the north of Scotland and to the south of Iceland. But okay, let's skip geography and let's continue with chess. You're playing with white pieces. I would like to know which you think is white's uh, best uh, continuation here. Let's see if we can get this right. Working together, teamwork. I'm sure we can uh, fix this uh, little problem that white is having in this game. They actually lost this game. Yeah. Faroe Islands, uh, the Grandmaster from Faroe Islands won this game because the opponent didn't play in the right way. What about the South Sandwich Islands? I don't know, uh, L. My mom is Icelandic. Interesting information. Yeah. Iceland and UK says South. Like, yeah, Scotland, I guess it's part of the UK still. Uh -huh. So that's maybe a more proper description. Um, all right. Rook A8 check. Why would anyone give that check to me? That feels like the Christmas present, Rook A8. Why would you play that? Did you help my king to get to G6 or I'm missing something? You'll have to explain that, uh, legendary goat. Why, why would you give that check? Uh, Quoki, you played exactly like in the game. Congratulations. Uh, what else? Yeah, and those of you who played King A2, I can definitely forgive you. Uh, that's, that's okay also. Uh, Wow, I got many answers. How, how many uh, students are present today? Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, like 35, I think. Okay, nice. So let's see here. Quark is the only one who got uh, my variation, but that's... that's a, okay, Alg, you're also very, very close. Yeah, we can invite uh, Alg to this. Uh, please go ahead, Alg. Show us. Yeah, King A2 is okay, but King C2 looked a little more... Precise. So rook a seven. That's our key move here. We're tying the rook to the pawn to the, the. I mean, we're tying the king this time. Sorry, we don't want the king to to move up deliberately. If you play this move rook a eight, you really have to explain this. I, I don't understand why. Why would anyone play like that? You're just helping me to activate my king, right? That cannot be correct. Uh, what about b four on move one? B four. Well, I my first impression, I take it. Please notice, I'm interested in taking this pawn and set up my. My past pawn, right? Well, it's a past pawn already. Rook b6. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, I will defend it first. And then I will try to bring up the king. So you would have to use our method now, right? You have to play like that. But I think you're dead lost in this position. I'll just play rook here. I will take it. And when you take back, I'll bring in my king. Right? Yeah, I think black is just winning. Why are you trading when you need... Yeah, good. I like that way of thinking. Who said that? Gordon says, why are you trading when you need counterplay with that pawn? Exactly. This is why it's only chance, you could say. This, this pawn is why it's only hope for, hope for a draw in this game. You need to, to use that pawn. So um, B4 cannot be, <clears throat> cannot be correct. That's, after all, your king is on the queen side. So you have somebody who can 
assist the pass call, right? Once you get it running. So back to uh, Al, Rook A7, you don't let me play King H7. So I will go for that pawn. I'll go for that pawn now. Please go ahead, Al. Uh, yeah, no problem, uh, Heuristic. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very good that you ask questions, by the way. That's excellent. That's what we're here for. If you go to the other side, I think it's, it's, not, uh, it's not a mistake, but maybe if you go this way, your king has like a limiting effect upon Braxrook, possibly. Uh, anyway, yeah, I'll, I'll take the pawn. Um, aha, and now I try to bring up the king to take the pawn. And now we can just go for counterplay. Exactly. So once we have arrived at this position, uh, I can, of course, continue. I can bring in the king. And I think you have a, two, a few different ways of, of, of playing here with white. Uh, yeah, one would be just to um, put the rook on the other side, perhaps. I don't know if you want to do that. Exactly. And then continue. Now it's already, as you can see, I mean, white will never win this game, but black has something to, to think about. And if you can um, push that pawn further, their pieces will be very restricted, I think. Something like that, maybe. Oh, sorry, I'm losing track of the chat here. Yeah, B5, and I, I guess I have to go back with it. I, I can't find an angle to, to... I would love to control it from behind, but I can't. I guess I have to go back in that case. But as you can see now, White's considerably active. Um, I can try to use my king very soon to help the pass pawn. Um, something like that and bring up the king. And Yeah, I think White should not lose this game at least. Black will, of course, try to do something on that side with their pawns, but... It will take some time. I mean, we can we can continue playing if you like. We can play out a few more moves, but I don't think White's in any risk of, of losing here. Aha, all right. I'll have to play something like that, I suppose. Aha, all right. I'll, I'll continue to run. But I guess this would end in a draw uh, very soon. Or Anyone has a different opinion? What about e5 instead of king e7 and just get the pawn? Okay, we will come to that. Yeah, let, let me just finish off this just to have a clear picture of what's going on here. We should be able to make a draw, right? I hope we didn't make some... This, I don't know if it's needed, though. I'll probably play that anyway. Um, but I think you can play like for Tsukzwang also here. With white, I mean. You can play for some Tsukzwang idea. White's king is pretty active, exactly. I, th I think so, too. I don't know if the straightforward king c6 and king c7 is, is good enough, but I get the feeling there is some Tsukzwang uh here also like like if you played rook before and and you played b7 is that is that so or, or maybe i'm i'm tricked here yeah i'm not convinced either <laughs> maybe we we messed something up with with white here i don't know but i think there is a tuk swang here somehow like if i go like can i play like that and just take the pawn i think that's that's the easiest way to make a draw right if i'm missing some key detail here let me know but it seems to me that, uh, yeah, it's going to be a draw here. So that's maybe one way to play. Yeah, maybe one way. Uh, El, you, you, you were saying something before. Uh, something with the king, going with the king, you were saying. Uh, when did that happen? Rook f8, sorry. So we are basically saying that white should start with this move to slow down black's, black's play a little. Uh, they will go and take this pawn. And they will try to take take the other pawn also. Yeah, we were saying here rook takes. Instead of e5, go king e7. Instead of e5, go... I, I don't even remember where when did that happen. What did we play here? We played king h7. King h7. And what happened after that? b4, king g6. Rook c5, king takes f6. b5. After king h7. Uh, am I in the right place or, or is... Rook g8, yeah, b6 and rook b8. Yeah, I'm, I'm just playing through all the moves. Oh, you're saying go king e7 here. Yeah, I, I understand. So <coughs> I guess in that case, we have to bring up the king. And uh, oh, but this is this is maybe troublesome for white. I understand. Yeah, I think we, we went a little too far. Not fast enough. Yeah, 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 I, I agree, I agree. This is not the, the right way to go probably with, with the white pieces. I think we, we messed up something, no? We messed up something. Maybe we should bring in the king first. And uh, to have the king also there in, in action. Like if if they played something like rook b8, we could bring in the king. Maybe if the king goes this way, you can also play like that first, right? So that you keep an eye on, on the pawn and you get the king closer. Does this make any sense? Happy pawn. Does rook h5 before b4 help? Yeah, maybe you can move the rook over there also. Yeah, I don't know. 
interesting to play to put the rook but i can't go rook h5 here right either way the draw is practically quite difficult yeah it's not so not so simple aha uh -huh. yeah I, I, we can't play rook h5 you mean one move earlier like that like here rook h5 interesting yeah still i think there should be chances for 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 a draw anyway so let's uh let's see what happened in the game so this is basically what we should do here rook a7 try to slow down the uh, activation of the king and then bet on counterplay with the fast pawn. so in the game he played king a2 immediately yeah by the way if you said rook here and then you wanted to play king a2 i think it's basically the same thing you can do that also but i, I do like a little more to have the king more to the center but never mind in the game they played king a2 and then black continued with king h7 of course to bring up the king king a3 rook b5 b3 king g6 this is how the game went king a4 and then he played king takes f6 rook takes a5 rook g4 so even here i think it was a draw but uh, somehow black got like a better version of this if you if you see what i mean it's the pawn didn't get that far and, and he was later able to win this game aha uh -huh. so I interesting in any case that's my <coughs> take on this position that we should play rook a7 try to target the pawn on f7 not to to take it but to limit his his king basically all right i'll show you another example which is rather uh, similar in its uh, way of working let's see here uh, this is a very interesting end game played by david navara with the white pieces and elarvi playing black i think it was a uh, famous end game expert karsten Müller, who uh cover this this end game some years ago and let's see if i get this right we're seeing this from white's perspective but it's actually black's perspective yeah so let's see if we understand this together equal material the white pawn is going this way i'll, I'll straighten out this immediately before we have some confusion here the white pawn goes this way and the black pawn goes that way so you're sitting with the black pieces this is your f pawn right this is the f pawn this is white's d pawn so we have this tricky we have this tricky position you can see that white must be better because uh their king is well both kings are active but white's king is doing like two things it's supporting a little here and it's fighting a little there against black's passport but the very big difference of course is that white's rook is in a very good place and black's rook is in a terrible place uh, so here there is only one way i think in which you can <clears throat> make a draw against david navarra so that's what i will uh, quiz you on now let's see if we can get this uh going so you get the black pieces here i'll give you one minute and 15 maybe you but all right we'll see take your time guys take your time the path to a draw is very narrow and i would advise you to use our restriction thinking okay tying the opponent's pieces and things like that aha okay nice you're going to a tournament this weekend some of you that's excellent aha Hartford. Okay, nice. Um, we have a winner already, 206. Congratulations. You have found the right way of playing. Uh, Alg and Adiches, interesting. Can you play like that? Yeah, maybe you can. I, I didn't, yeah, you can, of course. Yeah, it's, it's the same thing, right? Okay, I'm sorry then. I can only give you one uh, correct move. I'm, I'm very sorry. Uh, that, that should also make a draw, of course. Yeah, of course. Um, okay sorry about that um i can only give you one move like like the correct move so 206 and daniel you have played exactly like like uh, like we should play here <laughs> in the game something else happened uh, some people are actually playing like in the game it seems uh -huh. so if you go the other way with the king no then i think you're lost right yeah then you're lost if you go to h5 I'm very sorry, but then you will lose the game. Yeah, why not King H5? We will talk about that. Yeah, we will talk about that South Act. No hard feelings. We're here to learn. Maybe I made a mistake. We will see. But first, I, I will give the move to 206. So please go ahead. Nothing is wrong with King H3. L. Oh, nothing is wrong. Rook A4. This is the key move. We need to uh, keep the pawn, uh, the king tied to the defense of the pawn. Why is that? That's an awkward move, you would say. Why on earth would I put my rook like that? I want to use my rook like this, or I want to use my rook like that. Why Why would I put it there? Well, it turns out that after the rook check, we have at least two moves which should be okay here for, for black. 
but it's important to stay close to this square, which happens here after rook f8, tricky move, white wants to take this pawn. But we have king g3, uh, which means that if I take the pawn, now black can liquidate and it's it's a draw. If you don't, <coughs> yeah, thanks at 206. If you don't put the king there, if you put the king on um, g5 instead, everybody can see the usage of intermediate checks, right? Intermediate checks. These are extremely important in, in rook and games. Uh, sometimes we think that intermediate moves, it's just like a tactical ingredient, ingredient of tactical play. But it's actually extremely important in end games also. Rook f5, that's the move that white will use here to uh, win the pawn without letting black take like, like that. So that's also the reason why you cannot play king h5, because in that case, uh, white goes back with the rook, right? So it's okay to play uh, king h3, like some of you are saying. At least it seems to me that it's okay. Unless I could play something like, yeah, it would be funny to play something like that, right? But yeah, you can just play like this and wait, wait a little here. Is, is this is this really so convincing? I'm trying to cut off your king here. Well, I have to think about this. Oh, you go king h2. Oh, I see. Yeah, this was a tricky line. I was trying to understand if I... If this is, this could be winning for white, right? We have managed to cut off the king. So that should be winning chances here, for sure. Uh, all right, what are you saying? King h2, that's what you play. I see, you play king h2 instead, says L. I think you're right, L, but I mean, could I play something like that and now try to take the pawn or am I missing the point here completely? King h2 should be fine for black. If you show this to a beginner, the beginner would say, hey, this is crazy. Why, why am I moving away my king? I should keep the king in the battle. So I don't think this was a good idea. But uh, yeah, those of you who said king h4, at least you managed to fool me here. <laughs> I thought you were right for a moment, but it's actually not true. Yeah, we have to play. We have to play king. It seems no, nothing is completely clear, but it seems this is the only move that we can really play here, king h4. So that uh, we are ready to to meet rook f8 with king g3. Uh, yeah, so much tactics in endgames, right? And king f3, yeah, we could just take the pawn, of course. Rook g2 and rook d2, maybe. Rook g2 and rook d2. Rook g2 and rook d2. But then I can always come back, right? I can always come back. I don't know if I can play f3 also. Can I play f3 or is that that's a blunder? I don't think that's a blunder, right? If you play rook here, I can play like like that and i have the same trick again correct me if i'm wrong f3 king g3 yeah but don't put the king on g3 though because then i can take it with check right yeah crazy how complicated it is yeah it's extremely complicated i i agree i agree a lot of small details and imagine you're sitting here with like two minutes on the clock how difficult to find your way through all these complexities in the game actually el arby uh, played in a different way and lost uh, I can show you very quickly what happened in the game. He played the most natural move, I would say. He played rook a7, I think. Is that so? Did he play rook a7? I'm trying to find my way through the, through the annotations. I have this here somewhere. What did he play in the game? No, he played king g5 in the game. Yeah, he played king g5, hoping that he could bring home the king. He was hoping that Navarra would play d5, and then he would play king f6 and just go for Philidor's defense. <laughs> but, uh, of course, Navarra didn't do that. So, anyone, what should White play here? Rook c5, that cannot be correct. No, I'm, I'm inside the, the square if I t take. Rook f8, of course, a chess out. Rook f8, not so much for taking the pawn, but in order to uh, stop king f6. So I would say cutting off the king, cutting off the king, one of the most, one of the most basic restriction methods in the end game. This is extremely important, of course. You know this, all of you, this uh, cutting off the king in different situations. I think we will come back to that a little later. So that's why they play rook f8. He played in the game rook a7. And again, you need to be careful here. Exactly, L, we should use that intermediate check. There is a concrete reason why we should do this. If you play instead uh, rook takes f4, this means that black can give check and you will have to go back with the king, which is not what you want, of course. And anyone, what is black's uh, way to make a draw here? What do we know about this kind of position? Okay, legendary. We will come back to your uh, to your question. Okay, rook e1. Rook e1 does have a bad 
bad touch to it. I think I oh I'm almost dropping my rook. Sorry, sorry, I, I didn't see your cheap tactic. Um, I can maybe yeah. Could I try to cut off the king? Like, I guess I have to play this move, right? Else it's not making sense. Yeah, and what would you play? Yeah, I, I'm not sure, but I'm I'm still a little un, uncomfortable as long as the king is cut off. Yeah, rook there. Sometimes you can cut off the king like this, but here it doesn't make sense. The king will come closer. But let's say I put my king on. Oh, I see. King, king e2 probably, so that I, I smoke out your your rook, right? Yeah, very tricky endgame. Also, this one is very tricky. Exactly. I'm, I'm hoping to go this way. That's my evil plan here. Uh, I think there is a better option for, for black. Rook e8, you were saying. Yeah, rook e8 is always good to like uh, extend the, the rook's... Uh, uh, What's the word? Range, no. To have a greater range for the rook. I don't know if how well it works here, though. I still have an uneasy an feeling about this. Well, if I go d5, you go rook d8, I guess. So that's not making sense. Yeah, I don't know what what I would play then with, with white in this position. Maybe you're close to draw. Could, could I still play rook e4? And if you give check, you cannot come closer, right? This is always important to to take into account these these rook trades are always important to take into account but i think white is no this is probably this is winning right i bring the king no i don't win this no <laughs> yeah we make it wrong with black here exactly so maybe that's better maybe that's better than rook f4 wins w what wins rook f4 wins here king f4 wins here really this seems like a draw to me the famous uh, fisher uh Gligorich Fisher, no? King D8, and it's and it's a draw, right? Like they don't have the the corresponding square or what you would say. So yeah, I don't think that's uh, winning. Yeah, you see how tricky these endgames are. But anyway, I think you're right that this this could be tried. This, what are we looking at, by the way? We are looking at yeah, we're looking at different ways for Black to make a draw after Rook takes F4. But the easiest way, I think, is to build a bridge with King G6 and Rook F7. That's what I wanted to say. But of course, David Navarra didn't give white black a chance to do this. He played rook f5 check, so that after king g6, he could take. And now, as you can see, the big difference is that since black's king is not touching the white rook, if rook e7, we can just uh, put our king on d5. Okay, I hope there is not a problem with connection, else I'm happy to refresh or something. Yeah, maybe this, uh, yeah. Why did the class just stop? Yeah, last time we had a problem with the connection, but I think today we won't have that problem. Yeah, it's, it should. Yeah, it then resumed. So if that happens again, just wait for me to. I think everybody was kicked out last time. So th this is the sad uh, way the game ended. No, in in, in this, in the, the the game ended that back in the Chess Olympiad some ten years ago. Black uh, had the bad luck of playing King G5, and White hurried to use this intermediate check. And here they have the king cut off, uh, so white will win here easily because um, sometimes you win it also when you have them cut off like that. But now you have them cut off along two files, so that's just too much for for black to handle. So yeah, that's how the game finished, and white white later went on to win. Uh, so the only way to save black here was this very funny move that we talked about. Maybe we should request this one just for fun, just to see if everybody picked up the right. Variation, very very tricky endgame. Yeah, it's it's hard to hard to understand it now. But uh, I think we made some progress. I think we understand it. Thirty seconds for this. All right. What about rook a four, rook g eight? Uh, okay, we will look at that uh, legendary. But wasn't that uh, rook check or something? Okay, we have a lot of winners. Congratulations to everyone. Who got it right? That's a big group of group of students. Wyatt, Sarthak, Smart Goldfish, Yugoslavian, Fianchetto, Hollow, Alg, Owen, Oski, Chess Vedant, Gordon, Heuristic Mind, L, GM Chess, Kwoki, and uh, more students. Yeah. Nice. Um, okay. What what was the question here? What was the question? Um, we were saying rook a4. And if rook g8, we have to keep the king here. Yeah, please remember we had this very interesting variation by uh, L, who said king h3, 
three and we were thinking that maybe white could play this very tricky move threatening mate and if the king comes back now to stop the mate we could play something like that uh, and take the pawn and similar to the game while if the king goes this funny way maybe we can use this move instead and now we can take the pawn that's i think what we concluded uh, last time when we looked at this so i hope that makes sense king f3 seems to be a good good move here yeah how about king h5 so somebody somebody said something about the variation here yeah you will have to help me here help me out uh what was the variation that you were saying rook a4 rook g8 king h5 yeah king h5 we go rook f8 and king g5 yeah i thought we talked about this already uh we already discussed this yeah rook f5 check the golden intermediate check <laughs> wins the game for white here right uh because i take it and i don't let you use your your evil trick with rook takes d4 okay i think we can continue i have another tricky endgame like similar to this one but i think it's slightly simpler it was actually played in 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 your country in the united states let's see if we can figure this out together um uh, in the this was played this year i think yeah it's charlotte spring gm tournament uh and go with white and david brodsky with the black pieces um uh, interesting end game now you can see that black is one pawn up and they are definitely getting another pawn they can take the pawn on h3 next turn unfortunately uh, white uh, lost this game oh i just know i know just rookie four i have played back before interesting anyway so i would like to know how white can save this uh, game you will have to be very precise but we have a move order issue so i'm sorry if you pick the other move order the great chessable classroom it's a very nice place for training chess but unfortunately it will tell you that you got the wrong uh, solution if you play the other move order i'm sorry but i can only provide one correct uh, correct answer okay let's see if you can find the whole way it's a very tricky end game and i'm not surprised that they got it wrong in the game so here we go you get one minute for this mission let's see how far you can get here this is gonna be hard not that hard don't be pessimistic at 206 don't don't be pessimistic yeah if you play that little chess player it's okay also it's okay but then you need to have the best move on move two yeah don't play that alg and hdi that's what he played in the game i think i'm afraid you got the game continuation and that's in this case it's not a merit unfortunately yeah very tricky end game yeah that's what he played in the game l smart and wyatt and that's in this case it's not not a good sign you can't go that way adi and yugoslavian i will play king g3 if i have two passed pawns i mean two pawns if i can keep them and i have reasonable activity uh, i will uh, win with black i think please notice the uh, difference with mvl's game here we are i mean there are some things in common but also black's pieces are more active here than whites in that than blacks in that example right anyway no than whites in that example so what's wrong with king e2 okay uh let's see let's see who got closest by the way chess vedant you were extremely close so was uh, legendary and uh, brian and fianchetto so let's check with chess vedant i want to see how far you got here let's let's see chess vedant you played the, the the first part was excellent so i'll give you the white pawn here all right please uh, go ahead You can just move the pieces, I think, Chess Vedant. Oh, you can't. Sorry, something happened here on my side. Let me try again. Uh, now I think you can do it, okay? Yeah, rook e4. So that's visual. Okay, what can you say? Visually, it's a good move, visually, because you're uh, tying them up to both pawns. And it has some concrete points also, because if you now take with a rook, it becomes impossible for black to to progress here what would you play with white here just uh, vedant <laughs> you can't progress here um never say never but th yeah that should be a good move right if i play here rook f3 you can just come back and you have a double threat at at the uh, pawn and, uh, and and the rook right these end games are always tricky so i i just take the opportunity to, to check this but I think I know what Chess Vedant will play against me now. 
Exactly. Yeah, just wait and has seen all the tactics here. It will end in a peaceful draw. Aha. Uh, nice. After king takes h3, king e2. Yeah, so we will come to that. I just wanted to show you first that taking with the rook, it's not a very good idea. It's better to take uh, with the king in this case. Yeah, how to explain this? Maybe because the rook, yeah, it's already in quite a, quite a good place. So take with the rook, we can play king e2, and it's difficult for them to uh, make any progress in this position, I think. Uh, is that so? I think also this is a good move, by the way. You can also play like this and you disallow them to activate their pieces. Obviously, if they drop this pawn, it's a dead draw because I have my king in the right place. So it's more dangerous for white that they drop that pawn and somehow they make this pawn run. And that's what happened in the game. So back to Chess Veland, Rook e4. I will now take with a king instead. So here I actually have a, I have a concrete threat here. I have a concrete threat. Uh, king f1 is the correct move. Let me just show you what would happen if it was black to play again. If it's black to play again, we would have this position. Black could give up one of the pawns. Anyone, how would you give up one of the pawns? Exactly, yeah. We would play rook t4, and after rook takes, this is the square that our king needs. And now we're ready to run with the pawn. You can see white pieces are in bad places. They would love to have the rook in the back, of course, but that's not possible. That's why black uh, stayed with the rook also on the G file. So that's the threat that we are faced with here. And that's the reason why um, Chess Vedant played here the clever move King F1. So King F1 stops King G2. That's the main point here. So in the game, he played King E2. In the game, he played King E2. And this was a bad, uh, bad mistake. Black played here um, rook g4, if I'm not mistaken. And as you can see, in the first place, we cannot go for the pawn endgame, of course. Black just makes it. So we have to play. Um, uh, we have to play here instead uh, rook takes, but then black will play king g2. Aha. Uh -huh. That's right. So what does that mean? Now we have a problem with white. We cannot really. Um, get at Black's king anymore, they will just run with the pawn. So, uh, yeah, all right, let's uh, let's continue. We, there are some strange messages. Uh, legendary goat, uh, I will bring this up with Greg Shahadi. I think your behavior today is a bit uh, suspicious. I don't know. We're here to learn, we're here to study chess, and uh, the big majority of students here. Are very disciplined and they focus on the chessboard but there is always one or two maybe students who don't behave in the right way and i think you should consider uh, to improve your behavior for the uh, what can i say for the best of everyone present here we, we don't want to lose time on on yes nonsense and so on so please behave a little better else i think uh, you might not be allowed back here again all right so Let's see what, uh, yeah, but uh, it's, it's annoying now. It's annoying. I know that this always happens. Now, if you, if you have 40 students, there can always be one who is, who is annoying now. But we had some situation like this in the past. Not very often, but it's, it's not uh, the point of all this. All right, back to business. Chess Vedan said, Rook E4, we're tying down Black's pieces to their pawns. After King takes um, H3. We should play king f1, denying them of the important move, king g2. At this point, black's best try here, as you can see, now there is no such thing because we don't have access to this uh, square. Sorry, we don't have access to this square uh, king uh, to, on g2 anymore. So white will try something else here. So I will try here the move rook f3. Some of you got this far. Some of you were saying king g1. Unfortunately, in this case, I think black should be winning here. <clears throat> I have two pawns. And I think it's the usual story that when you have two pawns, you can give up one of them to uh, decide the game with the other one. Like if black plays something like this. I haven't really looked at this, but I'm just guessing that you would play something like this. And in some way, maybe you can give up the pawn and you can bring in the king and you will. I think the H pawn will, will sacrifice itself for the success of the E pawn, something like that. So we can't really play like that. Please go ahead, um, Chess Vedant. 
That's right, we have to stay on that side, even though this means that the eighth pawn is now becoming a little more dangerous. So I played here rook f8, and I think this is the moment where, where you got it wrong. So thanks, uh, Chess Vedant. Let's stop here. Let's stop here just for fun. And let's let everybody have a chance. We will do something. You know the first three moves, right? You know the first three moves. We will repeat them. I will take the opportunity to repeat them. Please start with the rook move, all right? Please start with the rook move, and uh, then you know the rest, okay? But then you need to be very careful on move four. Then you need to be very careful on move four. It's a tiny little path to the uh, to the draw here. It, it's, it's not so simple. So I will give you one minute for this mission, okay? So please start with the rook move. Yes, please start with the rook move. Then use the king move, please. Let's do it that order. I'm sorry, Oski at 206. That's the game. You're repeating the game. I'm sorry, um, Adi, Chess, Alg, and Chess Art. This means that I will take control of the G file. It's very important in this case, the G file. Um, Nice! We have two winners, three winners. Brian, Smart Goldfish, HDI Chess, Sarthak, fourth winner. Congratulations. Uh huh. Very nice. A little chess player, awesome Owen. Excellent work. But not easy to find in the game, right? Not so simple to see all this in the game. Hollow Blade, you have also noticed. Uh, yeah, don't do that. Uh, yeah, we, okay, we will talk about that. I think there are no alternatives this, this time. So let's see here. Okay, please go ahead. Okay, Daniel, you were also very close. Heuristic Mind, you can show us this. Please go ahead, uh, Heuristic. How should we continue here with the white pieces? Yeah, we know the first part of the story. I will take with the king, so I keep my rook on this file. You don't let me play king g2. I will try to um, fool you here a little. I'll give up the pawn, and then um, I'll try to bring my my rook to the g file. Let's see what happens here. So we have to take with the rook. If we take with the king, sorry, just to make this clear to everybody, if we take with it in this way, white is just missing the move that they need. They don't have this check. And if they insist, try to do this, black, of course, will not play h3, letting white cut off the king. They will play sneaky move, rook g8. Restriction, here we are. We will actually, please uh, take a photo in your mind of this position, because in our next example, we will see something very similar all right so let's go back uh, to the right choice now please go ahead now uh, yeah exactly heuristic rook takes and yeah i should of course go this way and now comes the key move i would think that for most people rook e7 comes more natural we are after all taught that we should yeah put the rook on the edge and so on bring it as far as, away as possible from the opponent's king but in this case, uh, black has a sneaky way to, to win here. You would, of course, say, hey, we have rook g8 instead. But this is a tricky endgame. Don't say that I didn't tell you. This is a tricky endgame. White can make a draw with this funny move, uh, starting to give checks like that. Or if you try to push away the king, this looks like it's lost, but it's not lost because we are just in time to give this check. You remember the g file. And as we talked about last time, if there are only three files, if there are only three files, we cannot win this. We need four files. If there are four files, we can bring the rook quickly to g1. But here there is no time to make this. Uh, yeah, we cannot make it work, right? We don't have. Uh, we can't physically bring the rook to. Yeah, we can bring the bring it to g1, but we cannot physically bring out the king. Like if you played something like, like that, just to make this clear to everyone, if we get to this position, yeah. I can just keep my rook on the f file and you can never win this of course i will just stay on this side so for that reason this would make a draw however black has a sneaky uh, way to make uh, a draw here they have a sneaky way to, to sorry they have a sneaky way to win uh, let's see if i got it right right uh, here let's see yeah in, in this position so this is a mistake but not due to rook g8 uh, there is something else black can do anyone Rook f2, you're right, Adi Chess. That's the clever little maneuver. Don't forget about those intermediate checks that we talked about. 
Here the point is that we would like to put the rook on f3, which means that we can put the rook on g3. So after rook, uh, f2, white will play king e1, and we can play here rook f3, building a bridge, as they say, for the rook on g3. Uh, white is lost here, I think, after rook check and rook g3. Again, we have a problem. When the rook moves out, of course, black will uh, just continue to run with the pawn. Now we have control of the important g file. Uh, rook f3, g3. Yeah, I hope everything was clear. Yeah, by the way, yeah, you can definitely not take. I'll take with the with the h pawn, of course. Aha. Uh -huh. So for that reason, uh, let's go back to heuristic mind. Heuristic mind got the right move here. Uh, please go ahead, heuristic. We can do it again. Here comes the, the best move in the position. The only move to make a draw. Exactly. We target the pawn. We don't give them the tempo to play rook g8. They have to do something about the pawn. If they play h3, we have finally managed to to make a draw here with rook g4. And obviously, if they play something else like going back with the king, yeah, what would we play in that case? Uh, heuristic mind. Yeah, not so difficult, right? Now it's a different story. Aha, now we can play rook e3. And if, if I want to progress, I would have to go up. But that's not, that's not what I wanted, of course. Now I think it's, there are maybe more ways of making a draw, but this would be the most natural one. Just continue with the checks. Aha! Uh -huh. Tough exercise now, tough game. Imagine sitting there with one or two minutes on the clock and seeing all this. But basically that's what this is about. We restrict their pieces a little. This move is very important. We don't give them a chance to put the king on g2. I thought it was a simple draw, but then I worked a little on the variations and uh, I noticed it was not simple at all. So that's, that's one thing I also wanted to tell you today, that when you analyze endgames, for example, when you analyze endgames, um, the, computer, the computer will say, I can write that here, the engine might say uh, 0, 0, 0. No, that's what it often says. Uh, but there might be a string of only moves. So if the engine says it 0, 0, 0, that doesn't mean that uh, it's a simple draw. It's a trivial draw. That simply means that it will end in a draw. But maybe there are multiple only moves that you have to see, like in this case. Then it's not simple anymore. At least for humans, we cannot describe it as simple if moves like, for example, rook e7 uh, lose the game and so on. Okay, I'll show you another uh, example, which um, shows this idea when we are winning. Okay, we are looking at several examples where we are making uh, a draw, but I wanted to show you also an example where we can use it when we are winning. So let's see if I can bring up this example, which was played last year. Uh, there is a tournament also in Europe where the countries in the center of Europe meet. Anyone? Do you know that uh, the name of that event? Uh, European Championship team championship team let's see here i'll test your uh, your uh, knowledge here championship for central central countries something like that yeah i, I don't mean the i don't mean the that europe european club cup i think that's the one they're playing right now no no i mean the yeah like montenegro something like that aha uh -huh. there is this called mitropa mitropa that's the name of it mitropa so in the mitropa i think you find countries such as Switzerland and Italy and uh, Slovenia and so on. They gather in this uh, this event. Germany is also playing now, for example, like the countries which are more or less in the middle and in the south. So I think that that's where it comes from. Mitropa Cup last year, Krastev, not sure which country, Germany maybe, Pelletier, I know for sure, uh, Grandmaster from Switzerland. This is the game that they had. So I will quiz you for... White's best continuation here. Let's see if you can make this work. Please notice what we talked about recently. We talked about uh, restriction, right? So try to prevent, try to see through your opponent's plans and try to prevent them, all right? That's your mission here. You will get one minute and 15. I'll give you some time here for you to... Uh, yeah, it's isn't it Mitropa? Mitropa, yeah, exactly, Mitropa. That's how you call it. I think it's like, like, like a German... Uh, combination of words like Mitte, like the, the, the middle, and uh, Opa must be Europe, right? 
Europa, something like that. Anyway, let's focus on the chess instead. Um, interesting move. Please don't forget, I have a passed pawn also, right? I have a passed pawn. If you play that, wow, can you play that really? <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, we will talk about that. That's what I played in the game. Um, I think. No, let's see here. If you play that, uh, Brian, and the uh, legendary smart goldfish, Yugoslavian, I will definitely check you there. I'll check you. And again, I'll try to, to keep you cut off along the B file. That's my, my point here. Um, all right. So very, very close, uh, Euristic 206, Gordon, JM Chess. Only problem with this may be that uh, I can bring in my king and try to save myself in that uh, rook versus pawn endgame, right? L, Mickey, Holo, little chess player. Don't forget that I can uh, use my F-pawn no, for destructive uh, purposes also. So who got closest here? Request, they say. Uh, let me see. Let me see who is closest. HDI chess, you're extremely close, but you're hanging the rook there in the end, I'm afraid. HDI chess. Your idea was brilliant, but uh, it's not fully working. Okay, let's see. We will talk to somebody. Let's bring up uh, 206. Please go ahead, 206. You're very, very close. So we will uh, follow in your footsteps here. So this is the first move. If you didn't see this, no problem. Uh, white in the game didn't see it either, and that cost them half a point. This is the key move. It's just like in the previous one. That's why I told you. I told you in the previous one. I gave you that hint, right? I can bring it up again. Uh, let's see. I'll, I'll bring it up again. It was here. Let's see very quickly. I just want you to see the complete uh, connection. Yeah, in, in which line did we come across this? Um, we talked about the G file, right? Yeah, with rookie 7, rook G8. This is what we talked about. Black plays... Rook g8, so as to stop white's move, rook g7, right? So many of you noticed this. Uh, for example, 206. So we're back with 206. Please uh, go ahead, uh, 206. Exactly. Rook b2, that's a clever move because we don't let them give us checks, which means that we have a simple plan here now. King, pawn, king, pawn, and so on. Black cannot really stop this plan in any good way. You can also see that if I approach my king in that way you also have like a plan b here you can also go for at some point i mean you can you can yeah or you can play d5 and create a second password exactly if you have calculation skills for that uh, i'm slow and i i only see that i can maybe bring the king closer to to those pawns at some point win the game on that side but yeah d5 should also be convincing yeah to create a second password our passwords are located further up and so on interesting approach yeah i didn't think of that but that seems very strong also. So rook b2, that's a good start. In the game, I mean, in the main line, they played here king f7. Yeah, it's a little risky. Yeah, I think so too, uh, L. So king b6, and I now, this is my only chance, right? I need to go for active counterplay. a7, and one thing too, it's interesting here. You have two moves which are connected to the same plan, right? a7 and king b7. So which one should we play first? Why are we saying that a7 is better? Could anyone explain that in the chat? Why why is it better to start with a7? Mm -hmm. That's right, Oski. a7 is better because we're restricting the rook. The rook can't move away. Um, it might have some tactical implication if you're able to take the pawn or something like that. King b7, we will play it later, but this is like getting an extra uh, merit of this move, extra function, is that we're limiting the rook a little more. So, all right. Uh, you could actually play rook f2 first also. King f5. Uh, so, this is how far you got? Uh, I think so, 206, right? That's how far you got. I don't remember what was your next move here. Uh, what did you play? Did you play king b7? Yeah, I think you played king b7, right? And I was saying that I would play king e4, and I think I can make a draw here after uh, a8, and uh, I will uh, take on d4, and I think I will definitely, I will not do this, of course, because your king is coming faster, no? I will just take the pawn on, on e5 first, and then I will just go back to my business with the, with the f-pawn. So this should be a draw, right? Uh, okay, so we have seen the first part. Okay, let's, let's do something 
clever here because people were saying other moves also and i don't want to leave anyone in the dark here uh, some of you were saying the move um rook h uh, seven check but i don't think this makes sense right i can play king e8 and if you play a7 i can play f2 uh, which means that my pawn is also running right uh, is there anything about this oh you want to play rook h6 uh oh yeah we will request very soon oski yeah we'll do that if you play that i think i will just continue with my business i will put my king here and if you put your rook here this is the move that i'm going to use to make a draw in this game well that's my hope at least i don't see how you can possibly progress in this position i'll, I'll do this and and i will just wait for you unless you could create some kind of tsukswang here but i don't think you can if I get to this position, for example, I don't even think this is a Tsukswang. I could play this if it was my turn, I think. So anyone can White win this position? I'm I'm not convinced at all. Uh, no, not really, right? Aha. So that's not so convincing for, for White. 